Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good, good evening, everyone. Uh, at the outset, I thank the organizers of the MENA Stroke Conference for inviting me on behalf of World Stroke Organization to give this talk on acute stroke management. And what I'm going to cover is, besides thrombolysis and endovascular treatment, I will cover the acute management and management of stroke. So this slide shows the pillows of stroke uh, uh, recovery. And uh, we can see here, uh, the base is the stroke unit care. In the stroke unit, you uh, give deliver thrombolysis, endovascular treatment, and control some of the factors that worsen the outcome of stroke and also uh, take care of the nutrition and also um, in the treatment according to the stroke uh, subtype. Uh, this slide shows uh, the table uh, with, a, uh, with uh, in the left hand side is the interventions that are available um, for stroke. And it is extrapolated to uh, 5 million uh, population of, uh, having a 10,000 strokes a year. Uh, basically, it uh, tells the population impact of these interventions uh, in terms of uh, uh, impact in, in terms of extra independent survivors per year. The last column you can see here for each intervention, this is a number of extra independent survivors. Um, among all the intervention, you can see the stroke unit care as a highest population benefit. If you combine some of the activities that happen in the stroke unit, like starting aspirin, thrombolysis, uh, um, thrombectomy, and rapid secondary prevention, it would cross to close to 600 or 700. So uh, stroke unit care has a major population impact. So what is stroke unit care? And a uh, stroke unit is defined as an area within a hospital where stroke patients are managed by a coordinated multidisciplinary team specializing in stroke management. So what happens? Stroke patients, when they are managed in stroke unit, that leads to improved outcomes. Why stroke units are effective? Number one is there is a geographical concentration of stroke expertise, and there's a team approach and there are many factors that can lead to a worsening in outcome of stroke patients. Um, and uh, those uh, factors are addressed, particularly, for example, uh, swallow assessment, you know, that can uh, prevent pneumonia and the other complications and early implementation of secondary prevention strategies, early rehabilitation. And uh, the most important one is the motivation of the entire team and involving the patients and families. What is the evidence that we have? This is the latest Cochrane review uh, for the organized inpatient or stroke unit care um, from uh, more than 40, almost close to 50 trials in different uh, types of stroke unit. And uh, uh, patients who are managed uh, in the stroke unit are more likely to be alive, living at home and independent uh, at one year after the stroke. And irrespective of the stroke subtype, uh, this benefit is uh, uh, um, seen. And, uh, and the results appear to be uh, very significant in stroke units based in a dedicated stroke ward. So uh, what are the things that happen? What are the interventions that happen in the stroke unit? Number one, the management of blood pressure. Um, in a stroke patient, the BP has to be uh, 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 reduced if they have hypertensive encephalopathy, coexisting acute renal failure, acute pulmonary edema, and myocardial infarction. Otherwise, you know, why there is an uh, increase in blood pressure? Number one, uh, it could be a stress of stroke. Sometimes patient is unconscious, not able to communicate. There's full bladder and there's be pain, and that leads to sympathetic sympathetic surge uh, and pre-existing hypertension. It could be a physiological response to hypoxia and a physiological response to increase in ICP. And the patients can have stroke so patients can have hypertension, and if they have they are volume depleted, aortic. Uh, dissection, uh, myocardial ischemia, or uh, cardiac arrhythmias. 
So what are the benefits of lowering blood pressure? Um, yes, uh, you can probably prevent a, a expansion of brain edema, uh, improve the reperfusion, and uh, uh, you know it can uh, we can prevent worsening of uh, hemorrhagic transformation and, and further vascular damage. And uh, uh, increasing uh, increasing blood pressure would be beneficial in a patient with critical stenosis, and also to maintain uh, cerebral perfusion pressure in these patients. So the target blood pressure in acute non-reperfuse ischemic stroke, it is 220 by 120. Acute reperfused ischemic strokes is 180, 105. And acute intracranial hemorrhage, uh, we have uh, some evidence that you can in, uh, aggressively reduce within six hours and maintain below 140 for the next seven days. And um, this is a trial for Enos trial where they used, they randomized ischemic stroke patient and hemorrhagic stroke patient. If the BP was more than 140 to one, BP was between 140 to 220, the first 48 hours to GTN patch was no GTN patch. Uh, and if they were on uh, BP medications earlier, to continue BP medication or stop BP medication. This trial recruited 4,011 uh, 4, patients and uh, they did not find any uh, significant difference in terms of outcome, whether patients were put on GTN patch versus patients who were continued medications or stopped the antihypertensive medication. In ICH, there's a landmark trial in track two trial uh, that I mentioned, the acute phase, um, uh, you can reduce the blood pressure to, uh, to um, around 140 and maintain for the next seven days. In primary outcome, there was no difference. However, in the secondary outcome, there was improvement in quality of life. And oh, another important factor is uh, um, avoiding the BP variability in the first seven days. You know, if you keep it stable around 140, that also leads to good outcome. So moving on from blood pressure to uh, simple nurse-based interventions. It is called FES, that is fever, sugar, and swallow. So uh, hyperthermia uh, has a poor outcome in terms of stroke. And uh, uh, in this uh, um, FES protocol, uh, this is a protocol adapted uh, in a quest trial, which I'll be discussing. And any uh, temperature more than uh, um, uh, under degree, 100.4 degree Fahrenheit, uh, you, uh, you know, use paracetamol and monitor the temperature and keep uh, uh, below 99.5 Fahrenheit. And um, you know, the second one is a blood glucose. So uh, 10 millimoles, so that is, uh, 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 it's about 180 milligrams. So this is a protocol uh, uh, for managing sugar, which can be managed by the nurses if they use this protocol. And you need to basically keep the target between 140 to 180 and avoid hypoglycemia. And uh, if the blood sugar is high, use a glucose insulin infusion and use this protocol uh, to control blood sugar, both in diabetic patients and non-diabetic patients. Another important thing is a, a swallowing screen. You can use uh, different swallowing screens, but it has to be done as soon as they are admitted um, based on your availability, um, and then decide whether to feed these patients or not. This uh, this prevents um, aspiration pneumonia. This care bundle was tried in a cluster randomized trial in 19 stroke units in Australia called QUEST trial. What did they find? The intervention patients were significantly less likely to be dead or dependent at 90 days as compared to the control group. There was a reduction in mean temperature, there was a reduction in blood glucose, and uh, uh, the swallowing screening improved when they use this care bundle. And there was some reduction in length of hospital stay uh, in this group of patients. This is a simple nurse driven intervention which can be implemented in uh, stroke unit. What is the best head position in acute stroke? So very often we have seen patients, you know, when they come in, uh, they are okay, and then you ship them to the scanner and uh, make them to sit and uh, lift them up and change their head position can uh, lead to some worsening of stroke, particularly when they have a large artery occlusion. Many of us have seen. So in, in this situation, what is the best head position? This was tested in the you know, head post trial, which was a cluster randomized crossover trial um, you know, done in 11,000 patients, 85% um, by ischemic stroke patient. Basically within 24 hours, 
um, um, patients were either randomized to uh, for first in the hospital, um, the first treatment modality is keep the head and flat or keep the head end up to 30 degree. And the primary outcome was improvement uh, uh, that using modified ranking scale. There was no significant difference between these two groups. It's a large trial and a very pragmatic trial. And uh, um, so you can use uh, any position and uh, see the convenience of the patient and whether they have a large vessel occlusion or not. Other complications with the pneumonia, you can prevent pneumonia by keeping them semi upright position frequent suctioning and chest physiotherapy, formal swallow assessment should be done before we feed them. And this can reduce uh, uh, pneumonia. Prevention of DVT and pulmonary embolism, these are standard protocols. Either you use unfractionated heparin or low molecular weight heparin. Intermittent pneumatic compression is the treatment of choice. Uh, the TED stocking is ineffective. Second prevention of ischemic stroke, as you think 48 hours, you need to put them on aspirin. The other drugs are clopidogrel and aspirin dipenomal combination. If the, um, in the, uh, the lipids are uh, deranged, you, know, you can put them on atorvastatin, 80 milligram per day, anticoagulation in patients with uh, uh, atrial fibrillation and control all the other risk factors. Rehabilitation and acute stroke, it is very important. And uh, how early we can start? This was tested in our trial where um, within 24 hours, the patients were randomized to intensive harm. That is the high intensity mobility training about uh, eight times daily, 20 minute session for about 14 days or till they were in, uh, discharged in the, from the hospital versus usual care. Uh, this particular trial, um, uh, uh, what they showed was that very, early, uh, very high intensity mobility training within 24 hours was harmful and it should not be done. And then uh, our dose, which is on ongoing trials, looking at uh, after 24 hours, so what intensity, how frequent uh, we can uh, mobilize them. And these and that should be, that will be answered through our dose. Um, another important thing in uh, rehabilitation is involvement of caregiver, training of caregiver, which was tested in this trial in India. Um, we call it a trial, about 14 uh, centers in our country participated. 1250 patients were randomized to either intervention arm or control arm. In the intervention arm, the physiotherapist trained the caregivers to deliver rehabilitation in their homes. And this trial was neutral, but the many lessons that we have learned from this trial can be implemented as a home care program uh, for this patient. Early discharge planning is very, very important. While they are in the hospital, we need to involve the multidisciplinary team and come up with a plan at the time of discharge, clear cut goals at all levels for the nurses, for the rehab experts and, uh, and offer them community support uh, and uh, uh, for up to three months. And this has shown uh, uh, benefit from a Cochrane analysis uh, where uh, uh, appropriately resource ESG services with coordinated multidisciplinary input can reduce disability and length of hospital stay in a select group of patients, probably mild to moderate strokes. So how can we develop, uh, how can we develop stroke care services? And uh, there are, particularly in uh, uh, low and middle income countries, there are several models available because the neurologists are not there um, and in adequate numbers in LMICs. So one of the models that we tested in a remote hospital in Northeast India, in a place called Tejpur, it's a second level hospital. We reorganized the existing uh, infrastructure and had a dedicated beds for the stroke unit and trained the nurses, staffs, and they had an in -house CT scanner. And uh, we collected before we implemented the stroke unit baseline data and uh, after implementation of stroke unit. And we can see here, there is a gross reduction in the complications and uh, all the key performance indicators in terms of swallowing assessment, mobility assessment, education, multidisciplinary approach, uh, initiation of anticoagulant drugs, antiplatelet drugs, uh, uh, initiation of antihypertensive drugs, all these um, key performance indicators improved in the post-stroke unit care. Uh, the length of hospital stay also improved. However, the outcome was not different between both the groups, but at least we are able to demonstrate the improvement in key performance indicators. So this slide summarizes the different models of care available in LMICs. 
The typical one is a multidisciplinary care where the stroke neurologist and the multidisciplinary team takes care of the patient. It is um, where uh, um, all the facilities are available. Specialist-led care is a neurologist, but not interested in stroke. Uh, the stroke unit may be present or not. Then there's a physician-based model, which I just uh, talked about. And then the up and spoke model using government healthcare infrastructure, where the primary health centers, secondary health centers, can be attached to the tertiary government hospitals in a, a hub and spoke model. The last one is the task sharing. The frontline health workers can be trained in the villages to identify these stroke patients and create a network uh, involving hub and spoke with the government hospitals. Um, so these are the models that are available in low and middle income countries. Lastly, how to organize a stroke unit in a resource limited setting? You need to uh, identify a dedicated area, start with six beds, have some monitors and infusion pumps, train the nurses, the doctors, create a team and have uh, uh, at least a modified multidisciplinary team uh, with the physios at least. And uh, you need to have protocols for all this. So uh, the multidisciplinary team can meet separately or they can join the ward round and uh, combine uh, uh, the meeting with uh, um, the ward round so that you can, uh, because everyone is busy, patient, they are overloaded with patient, involved in the family and have a clear cut discharge plan as I mentioned earlier. The number of staff depends upon the availability locally and also the you know, volume of stroke patient that you see in the centers. Who will run the stroke unit? Anyone who's a champion uh, who wants to drive the stroke care should be uh, running the stroke unit. And more information you can see from the World Stroke Organization, World Stroke Academy, uh, Essential Stroke Services, which has all the details of how to start a stroke unit. In conclusion, stroke unit care is crucial in the acute management of stroke. Uh, simple nurse-led interventions can improve outcome. A coordinated multidisciplinary team is essential. And in uh, low and middle countries, models of stroke care are available and people can use these type of models and uh, organize stroke care in uh, their own countries. And I sincerely thank my team, um, Christian Medical College, Ludhiana Comprehensive Stroke Care Program. Thank you.